Hi guys, I thought I would jump on here and just give you a really quick summary of a smart snacking guide or a checklist that I have uploaded to my blog. If you do want to get your hands on this, please head over to my website or subscribe through my website and you will receive this smart snacking guide. Ah, smart snacking guide through your inboxes across the weekend. So as we all know, working from home um, can quite often create a bit of a bad relationship between yourself and the pantry or yourself and the fridge. So if we aren't set up correctly at home, we often create this relationship where we're constantly grazing throughout the day and then we get to lunchtime and we don't really want to eat and our eating patterns are completely off. We don't want to finish this isolation period all rolling out 10 kilos heavier. We do want to create those really good boundaries and prevent us from um, unnecessary or over-consuming um, foods when it comes to snack time. So I have 10 boundaries or tips I want you to start implementing if you're not already doing so. So the first one is setting meal time um, as per usual and creating some routine. So if you have breakfast at 7 a.m., make sure you hit breakfast at 7 a.m. and don't skip breakfast and push out um, your snack to 10 o'clock because it means that you're probably going to over consume your food when it comes to your snacking. So keep consistency throughout the day. The second one is make sure you're having a balanced meal. So all the macronutrients we want to see on the plate at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So that is your proteins, fats, carbs, and lots of veggies. So for a female, we want to make sure we've got a palm size serve of protein at each meal. So about that size is 125 grams. Heaps of fresh fruits and veg, carbs such as like rice, quinoa, sweet potato, gluten-free pasta, probably about half a cup at each meal. Our healthy fats include things like avocado, olive oil, nuts, seeds, tahini, add those to your um, meals as well. The third boundary or the third tip is don't set your home office up in your kitchen I always think of this one like, you know, on a Friday when people go to work in casual clothes, it's casual clothes, casual attitude. It's the same when you set yourself up working in the kitchen or the lounge room, you're just not as productive. And then all of a sudden your mind's wandering, you're jumping up, you're at the fridge, you're eating again. And it's that vicious cycle we just don't want to get into. So create a home office or set your computer up on a desk outside of those sort of um, living areas. The fourth one is... Do not buy the lollies and the treats if you know that you're going to be tempted by it. If you do have these in the pantry, put it at the back of the pantry so you can't see it when you open that pantry or the fridge. And the other thing is, if you do buy it, try and buy it in a smaller quantity. So don't buy a kilo of nuts if you know that you're going to eat those kilo of nuts across the week. Opt for like a, a bag that's 200 grams because if you run out of nuts, you're not going to keep going back to the cupboard and keep eating them. So make sure that you go with something a little bit smaller if you are going to buy it. Tip number five, work out why are you why are you snacking? Are you really hungry? The answer probably is no. Or if you are snacking, are you bored? Is it habitual? Are you stressed? My tip, go and get a glass of soda water, squeeze some fresh lime um, in the glass, add some frozen berries, drink that, come back to me in 20 minutes later, 20 minutes later, and tell me if you're still hungry. If the answer is no, push it out till lunchtime and wait for your lunch. Don't snack just because, um, you know, it's snack time. Next one is make sure you're choosing nutrient dense snacks. So healthy options like carrots and hummus or some avocado or corn thins with some peanut butter, a pot of yogurt. So Greek yogurt or coconut yogurt with fresh berries and cinnamon or a homemade bliss ball. Don't go for things such as um, packaged chips or uh, processed biscuits with heaps of uh, salt in it and sodium or what else can I think of that's really unhealthy? Well, not that it's unhealthy, but you just shouldn't be eating every day. Things like cakes or chocolate or sweets or lollies. Imagine if you had a handful of um, chips and then you went for a handful of M&Ms and then you went for a slither of cake. It all adds up and you might not be incorporating that into your daily calories and that's when the weight's going to stack on. So go for the nutritional um, 
snack, such as the ones that I just mentioned, and avoid those sugary processed snacks. They're not, they're not nutrient dense. Six, the sixth one, no, we've just done six, up to number seven, add magnesium rich foods into your diet. So magnesium is really good for curbing cravings. So things like cacao, so dark chocolate has lots of cacao in it. So things like um, the limp dark chocolate, at least 70%, try and you work, work your way up to 85%. I know it's a little bit bitter, but you will get used to it. If you want to start off, um, try a little bit of dark chocolate with some almond butter on top for a little bit more of a creamy, like smooth texture. That's how I started eating um, chocolate that was a little bit darker and a little bit high in cacao. Other magnesium rich foods are things like bananas, avocados, um, cashews, seeds, other nuts. Um, what's some other ones? Berries. Add those kind of foods into your diet to reduce your cravings. Um, number seven, prepare a snack ahead of the week. So last week I made my raw cookie dough protein ball recipe. When it came to snack time, all I did was grab it out of the fridge. I didn't have to think twice about what I was eating. I didn't waste time and I knew exactly what I was consuming. I'm not, you know, adding things on my tracker because, you know, I've got to get the packet. It's, it's all a waste of time and you know exactly what you're consuming. Number nine, practice portion control. A friend just mentioned to me before something about almonds and whether almonds are healthy. Yes, almonds are healthy, but anything, um, you know, that any good thing that you consume too much of is going to become a bad thing. Like, for example, if you have 100 almonds, that's all going to add up in terms of your calories. Too much of a good thing. Sorry, what I was trying to say is too much of a good thing can quite often become a bad thing. So, um, a tip here is if you're not sure where your calories are coming from or how calorie dense or nutrient dense some of your foods are, add it into my fitness pal and assess at the end of the day, like maybe 30% of your calories are coming from snacks. You can reassess, go back to your meals and perhaps add a little bit more protein at mealtime or add a little bit more healthy fat at mealtime. So you're not relying on those snacks to get you through your day to, you know, make sure that you're hitting those energy um, and you're not feeling tired. The last one, my favorite one, is wine or alcohol is part of your snacks. So if you are consuming a glass of alcohol here and there, it is going to add up. Alcohol has about 80 to 120 calories sort of per serve or per glass. So if you are having a handful of um, wines, you know, on the weekend with family, or you are reaching for that bottle of bubbles at the end of the day. Um, it is a stressful time. I know alcohol can sometimes feel like um, it's it's helping us. Um, and yes, it is, it is good to um, enjoy a glass of wine as part of a balanced diet and socially, but remember it all adds up. A tip here is add those two glasses of wine into your track at the start of the day. So you're already um, taking those calories into consideration. So there you go, guys. There are my top 10 tips. You can grab um, my snacking guide. So here's a little example. Here is the snacking guide. You can grab um, via my website, click onto my Instagram profile, subscribe on my website, and it'll hit your inbox across the weekend. Bye for now.